If you had to put the GPL into really simple terms, how would you go about describing it? Probably the easiest way to summarize the GPL is that it's like a bill of rights for software. So just like you know, in the United States, we have certain fundamental and inalienable rights. Uh, GPL gives you those inalienable rights for the programs you use and everything on your computer. And especially as we become more and more reliant on technology and technology sort of dominates everything we do, I think having a base that we have true ownership of and that we have fundamental freedoms around becomes more and more important. Could you tell us a bit about why WordPress is specifically GPL license as opposed to BSD or any other license? Sure. So GPL for WordPress was this decision sort of made before I even understood what it meant because B2, which WordPress was created on, built on, was also GPL. Um, later when I began to appreciate the nuances of the different open source licenses, GPL has still been my favorite and because I feel it's the most moral of all the licenses. The GPL is a clause which basically says if you build something on top of a GPL product, it must also be GPL. So the freedoms are sort of maintained, even in derivatives or things that you know built on top of it. That's why all plugins and themes for WordPress are also GPL. This engenders an incredible amount of creativity um, because it allows things to build on what came before uh, versus other licenses. A lot of the innovation and development might happen in something that's essentially closed source. I mean, it's based on open source code, but there's no reason for anyone to release it. So it's it's essentially all that development goes into a, you know, sort of innovation black hole. So what's the difference between me charging for a GPL theme or a premium non-GPL theme? Why is one okay and the other one not? Okay. Um, so there's nothing in the GPL that says you can't charge for it. That's one of the freedoms, in fact, the freedom to use the software for any purpose is that you can sell it, you can do whatever you like. Um, but if you do sell a copy to someone or if you do redistribute your derivative product in any way, you can't take away freedoms from your what you're distributing. So for example, if I made a theme and I sold it to you, that's fine. But I can't say you can only use this on one site or you have to leave my link in the footer or something like that. You know, you should have the ability to modify it just like you know, you can modify WordPress. So if I see something labeled a premium theme, how do I know which ones are okay and which ones aren't? I think licensing is a complex issue. So uh, it's totally fine if someone, you know, new to the WordPress world doesn't realize sort of the ramifications of the GPL. I think that the reason that it's important that we stick to it, though, stick to our principles around it, is that WordPress itself wouldn't exist if it weren't for the freedoms afforded by licenses like the GPL. Um, the fact that when WordPress started, it was something that a piece of software that was abandoned and we were able to take it as a community and build on it. And also the the wide variety of plugins and themes available for WordPress already. If WordPress had a proprietary license or if B2, its predecessor, had a proprietary license, none of that would have been possible and none of us would be here in the first place. So it's kind of like all the things that got us to this point we shouldn't turn our back on those just because it's possible to make some money or it's pos or it's popular to make some money in a certain way. And just because you can make doing make money doing something doesn't mean you should do it. I mean, you can make money selling drugs. <laughs> you can make money doing anything. Uh, it doesn't make it right. Or just because you can get away with it doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do. So why is the GPL applied to themes and plugins when they're not actually WordPress? They're something that someone else has made from scratch. <laughs> So the key, the reason why uh, plugins are GPL is because they hook into the sort of core WordPress hooks and filters and functions. Um, they use the database class, they use everything like that. So by sort of linking core WordPress GPL code, they inherit some of the what's called the virality of the GNU public license. And the idea from that is it's a license which was created uh, so that all everything built on top of the product will protect the freedoms just like the product itself has. Uh, same thing with themes. So a theme, the CSS and images and JavaScript might be separate, but the actual PHP code that's part of the, uh, that makes up, you know, actually generates a theme, uses WordPress functions, it uses the WordPress loop, it uses WordPress template functions, everything like that. So it, just like a plugin needs to be GPL, themes, theme PHP needs to be GPL as well. A good rule of thumb is actually if, if you can, if you take WordPress out, does the other thing still work? And with most things and plugins, the answer is no. 
so they should fall under the GPL. So how come I can make a custom site for a client and charge them for it and not have that GPL? So a common misconception about the GPL is that, like, let's say I'm hired to make a theme for a client. Um, does that theme fall under the GPL? And the answer is no, because it's not being distributed. Um, when something's distributed, it's available for download to the public. You're selling it in a store. You know, it's sort of a mass distribution. When you do something for one site or just for yourself, like, for example, the theme on my blog, it's just on my blog, it's not being distributed in any way. So it doesn't actually, the, the GPL doesn't kick in until it's distributed. So there's some confusion around things that are premium but kosher by the GPL and things that aren't. Uh, so one of the things we're doing now is making a page on the WordPress theme directory that will point to folks that uh, sell themes that are of super high quality and also have sort of commercial support, things you can buy around them. Um, but still all the code is GPL, so you retain all the freedoms that you do from WordPress and they don't violate WordPress's license or anything. Um, we're just going to have a sort of mini directory of those that point to the different sites. If I GPL my premium theme though, maybe people just pass it to their friends and don't pay me for it, so... Some folks are definitely scared of sort of the idea that one person would download their theme and then distribute it to everyone and then they would only sell one. Um, in reality, this is already happening through piracy, right? Almost every single, actually it's true, every single premium theme out there is available for free for download on the web somewhere, if you just look for a little bit. So, just like this hasn't affected their business, I think they need to move the value up the chain. So rather than selling just the code, you know, sell the things that are most valuable to folks. When I talk to people who who buy premium themes or who pay for these things, often what they tell me is that it's not that the design or anything isn't something they couldn't get from a free theme, but they really like the community, the supports, the everything around it. The fact that it has a nice package site that sort of spells out the benefits. And they know if something goes wrong, there's a forum or there's some place for them to go and get help. Um, and that's worth money. And so I think we should try to emphasize those and encourage people to adopt business models which function on economics of abundance, not economics of scarcity. So what we'd like to do is there's a number of people innovating on top of the GPL to create some cool business models around it. One of these is having themes which are 100% GPL, meaning there's no restrictions on your freedoms. You can redistribute them, you can use them, you can modify them however you like, but that have sort of commercial support available. So let's say you, know, you want to use a theme, but you are hoping that if you have a problem with it, there's someone you can sort of, you know, online equivalent to pick up the phone and talk to. Many of these premium themes have support forms, uh, paid customization help, things like that, and some really nice websites around them. So there's some folks who are doing this under the GPL, but some folks who are doing this with proprietary license that restrict your freedoms and are generally evil. So we are trying to point to the people who are doing this in a way that doesn't restrict your freedoms to encourage them, reward them, and try to help more folks adopt this model. So basically we're going to have a directory of, you know, the brand gardeners of the world, the studio presses and press 75s and all those who are doing GPL based development. And then if you come across one, say a thesis, which is not, you know how to avoid it.